the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountains, those old mountains. Vivian Lee Washington Filer was born on June 6, 1938. She was one of five girls and moved to Gainesville, Florida at the age of six when her father, Levi Joseph Washington, returned from World War II. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Vivian Filer is the executive chair of the Cotton Club's rehabilitation effort even though she had no direct involvement with the club in its heyday. Ms. Filer is the local historian, the expert on the Gainesville Cotton Club, and she shares with us here the building's story. It's, still owned, it's now. owned by the church, by the church. and for this project it will be leased from the church on a 99-year lease mm -hmm. so that we can, as a board, we can do the renovations to it. Okay. Now, there are some other small buildings on that piece. Yeah. Can, can you that know? Is, that is good. awesome history. That is my history. Okay. There are four okay. houses that we call shotgun houses, were the homes for many African-American families who came through on a rental piece because they did belong to the Pearman Brothers. Mm -hmm. I remember those people because they were the older women in the village, the other neighborhood, mm -hmm. who sort of kept the neighborhood quiet. They looked after the children. I lived across the street from one, two of the houses actually, but closer to one than the other. And my mother worked till eight at night, which meant a lot of evenings it was dark. She had eventually five daughters and we were there. My dad had to go to night school, so we were there alone. My favorite story is to tell about opening the door to peep outside and it's getting dark and the, the ladies across the street yelling over at us, okay girls, you know your mother doesn't want that door open after dark. Close it and go back inside, which we did. With James Weldon Johnson, another one of my favorite poets, who was born and raised in, Gain in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, really? Yes, he, they wrote the Negro National Anthem, he and his brother, Jay Rosman. Their mother was a school teacher. She came home from school one day and told her boys she wanted a special song to commemorate the birthday of Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. Yes. And one son wrote the words, the other wrote the music. And we got lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. And it was used that day and sung many years, over like 20 years. And because James Weldon Johnson was on the board of NAACP, he convinced, that to make, convinced them to make that the national anthem. You, you see, because the national anthem for the United States didn't fit us. Yeah. We, it, it didn't call to us. The Statute of Liberty didn't say, give me your tired, your poor, your humble, masses yearning to breathe free, because we weren't breathing free. Exactly. So we had then a connection to our own history through that song. And the first song tells you to rejoice, lift your voice. The second stanza say how, how hard it was, stony the road we trod, bitter the chastened rod, felt in a day when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat. Have not our wearied feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed? I mean, we have some more freedom. And then the last verse is a prayer. God of our silent tears, God of our weary years, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Now, that song, uh, I, I get teary thinking about it because in the auditorium at Lincoln High School, watching Famous people come as Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune standing on the stage talking to us, calling us her children, and hearing that song sung in four part harmony by that audience. It's you just have to live it. There's no way to explain it except you just have to live it. I've been on many boards, you know that. You can look at my resume and tell that. <laughs> But I chair the Cotton Club, and I, I am a founder of the Spring Hill Group, and a founder of, of the nurses, co-founder of the nurses. And I work with queer, and I did all those other things, but only because I love to see progress. And my contention has been, if it's not right, you, and you don't help to fix it, you really can't complain about it. So if you have the wherewithal, it's not unusual for me to see a group of kids who are not doing what they should, stop my car, 
get out of my car and take care of it. I don't care who they are. Just one instance was yesterday driving down the street in my neighborhood. Four teenagers are walking down the street in the middle of the street, mind you, not on the side. So I pulled my car up, rolled down my window. I said, young man, tell me why the middle of the street belongs to you and not my car. And they said, I'm sorry. I said, then you must get to the side of the road when you see a car coming. Three of the guys kept walking. One stopped to talk and I leaned out of the door. I said, sweetheart, three of you, come back. You see this gray hair? I'm talking to you. And when I talk, you don't walk away because you're disrespecting me and I know you don't want to do that. No, ma'am. And they walked on. So they could have said anything, but to this point they haven't. And I have stopped many, many, many kids because we are going through an era where we have forgot to teach common manners and decency. We have to stop punishing just a child and teach we have to teach. Education is powerful. We have to go back a generation, maybe two generations, and call people to task for what they know. So I'm always out there trying to make sure that we handle those kind of things. And the storytelling, I get a lot out of that. I love to have an audience, I love, but I don't like stages. I want to be close enough to look in the eyes, because that's where I get my benefit. I mean, that is my high. And so I say to folks, I'm not doing this because I'm so good. I'm doing this because I get a satisfaction. It's a selfish thing to do, but I love doing it. I love the response. I love seeing the kids' eyes get big, and I like to think of them being on the adventure with the words. That's magic. That's so magic. And I've been doing it 53 years, and it's no less magic now than it was years ago. So. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountains, those old mountains stand by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock. Of my salvation, I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountains, those old